My uh, principal responsibilities during the course of Apollo 13 were as flight director for the, um, the mission. The uh, flight directors uh, have the responsibility for the uh, total conduct of the mission from the time that the uh, uh, rocket lifts off until the crew is safely on board the deck of the uh, carrier. The uh, principal responsibilities involve the development of the game plan, the mission rules, the flight plan, and all the supporting procedures going with it. The uh, conduct of the training of the operations team, the integration with the other uh, mission teams which will be uh, working, uh, this particular, the, the missions that were assigned. The final responsibility is one that's uh, very clearly stated in the mission rules. The flight director may take any actions necessary for the uh, safety and success of the crew and the overall safety of the uh, flight systems. So the principal responsibilities break down into the flight director is the quarterback of the team. He develops the game plan prior to the course of the mission. And during the course of the mission, he is the individual who has to call the signals. And if any deviations in the game plan are necessary, he will call them. Early portions of the mission uh, consist of several phases. The uh, flight operations team is broken down to those people who are going to handle the launch phase of the mission, including the launch countdown, the uh, translunar injection, and then the uh, coast as we move towards the moon. Uh, during the coast period, we have the uh, responsibilities for checkout of the command and service module and the LEM spacecraft. And we were in the process of just completing the checkout of the LEM spacecraft when the uh, problems on board Apollo 13 started. Uh, we used this coast phase as uh, an opportunity to uh, get familiar with the nuances of the uh, instrumentation in the spacecraft, to uh, make sure that we've got uh, clean spacecraft as we're moving towards the moon, uh, and get the uh, team pumped up for the uh, lunar phases of the mission. The, uh, the initial manifestations of the problems were very confusing to us. Uh, as flight director, I had reports coming in from every controller within this room. Uh, the uh, individual responsible for the uh, electrical power uh, system uh, came in and identified that he had had a couple of the fuel cells go offline, some of the valves closed, that he was losing pressure in his tankage. Uh, the propulsion controller came in and said he was seeing an abnormally high uh, RCS usage, and we had to watch out that we didn't get into gimbal lock. The guidance officer, uh, within the several minutes indicating that the tracking data was indicating uh, perturbations to the trajectory. The uh, communications and data personnel were having difficulty maintaining lock in the spacecraft. Uh, throughout this whole period, I was trying to sum up these unrelated reports coming in from each of the controllers and find out uh, what was common uh, and what could have been causing all the problems. And initially, uh, my, my initial thoughts went to the point where I thought, well, we must have an instrumentation problem that is giving us many of these manifestations, and this could be combined with some other problem like a stuck-on jet. In fact, the uh, crew believed during a portion of this thing, and, and as did my propulsion controller, that we may have had a uh, reaction control jet that we use for attitude control stuck on, which was causing many of the attitude perturbations, and with the attitude perturbations, we would then a break lock with our communications and data. So we were really trying to find what was common uh, in this problem. This occurred over the first three to five to six or seven minutes, at which time it became apparent that uh, we, uh, we saw too much consistency in, in some of the data we were seeing in the uh, electrical power system that we were truly losing uh, pressure within the tanks. Uh, so we tried several approaches to isolate our tankage uh, and accomplish the troubleshooting. And about 13 minutes into the uh, uh, accident, a very uh, cryptic message came down from the crew that said they were venting something. And as soon as the crew indicated they were venting, then the entire thought process of the ground team started to change because in order to be venting, we had to have some material which had either relieved on bo overboard, like uh, one of our uh, cryogenic sources, which is the one that immediately came to my mind. And this could account for the attitude perturbations because the venting was producing a, a jet-like effect in the spacecraft and we were having to fight it with attitude control. This could 
uh, basically tie together the perturbations we are seeing in trajectory. And it also is common to uh, the problems we were having in the communications and data. We continue to uh, work the uh, problem for uh, slightly over an hour uh, after it had occurred. Uh, we had stabilized the uh, attitude of the spacecraft, all venting had ceased. We had uh, very rough consumables uh, uh, utilization data from the LEM spacecraft that indicated that we could uh, keep the system operating for about four days. We had uh, made the decision to return to the free return uh, trajectory as soon as possible. Now, I was interested in getting off uh, shift for several reasons. First, uh, I was personally tired. My team was tired. And I wanted a new team to come on board with some fresh ideas. Maybe there was something that we had overlooked uh, that a new uh, and a fresh team uh, might pick up. Uh, we also wanted I, to get down into the room to take a look at the data during the, the course of this uh, explosion and uh, see if we could determine uh, what was the cause, uh, determine what systems were still fully uh, usable, what systems were questionable. So it was basically to uh, take the picture puzzle uh, that was represented by the data we had and put the pieces all together so that we truly understood the nature of what had happened so that we could very positively and crisply figure out what did we want to do about it. Uh, my job was to get the controllers to off console, downstairs, look at the data, and then provide recommendations to the other flight control teams that were now uh, coming on duty for uh, continuing the mission operation. Now, the Paracynthian plus two burn uh, is, is indicated. Paracynthian is the lowest point in the orbit as the command and service module and the limb would pass behind the moon. The plus two is two hours after that lowest point. Now, that time was not particularly critical, but it was the a reference time that we established for our planning and for the planning on board the crew. It was also a time frame where we would have good communications with the, uh, this uh, Apollo 13 vehicle uh, after it come around uh, from the backside of the moon. Now this maneuver would establish the return trajectory as we would come back to Earth. It would establish the uh, transit time from moon back to Earth and it would pinpoint a specific target uh, where we would place our recovery forces. So the Paracynthian plus two burn was extremely important uh, to us in establishing all of the references we would use for the remainder of the mission. Transit time home location of our landing point. Uh, as a portion, as a part of this burn planning, we had to establish the uh, combined center of gravity of these two vehicles, and we would trim the descent propulsion system uh, engine so it would thrust through this center of gravity. And this was uh, very important from a standpoint of efficient use of the consumables, the propulsion consumables that we had on board, as well as, as getting the very best possible burn at this phase of the mission so that we could truly lock in transit time home and the location where we would place the recovery forces.